Hello friends, this video on periodic classification of elements part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 5. Using uh, Mendeley periodic table, create the formula of oxides for uh, all these. Right, let's do that. So if you see, the first one is K, potassium. Let's see where K is. K is here, right? It's a group 1. So if you see, for group 1, it is R2O form. So K will be in this form, K2O. Very simple. Next is C. C is carbon. Carbon is here. Carbon is in group 4. Group 4 is RO2 form, right? So it will be R is C, O2 form. So this guy is CO2 form. The next is aluminium. Where is aluminium? Aluminium is here. In the group 3, R2O3. So it will be Al2O3. Just replace R with Al. Next is SI. SI is where? Group 4. So SI has O2 form. So it will be SI. Next is BA. Let's see where the barium is. And this is this guy. Since this guy is in group 2 and it has RO form, so it will be BA. And that's my answer. Very simple. With this little table, you can actually find which kind of oxides or which kind of hybrid will form. Besides gallium, which other elements have been discovered that were left by Mendeley in the periodic table? Uh, these were scandium and germanium. These were the two elements that were left for, for which the space was left for the, in the Mendeley periodic table and they are found after the periodic table was created. What was the criteria used by Mendeley in creating the periodic table? Obviously, he used the chemical property, right? So, he uh, found the oxides and hydrides of the elements and based on the oxides and hydrides, he created the group. And that was the group and then ordering in the group was based on atomic mass. So this was the first criteria, this was the same criteria. Why you think noble gas, uh, gas are placed in a separate group? Because they are inert, they don't react and they are different from all other. Right? They are different from all other. So they are placed in a separate group. Very simple answer. Now I study the modern periodic table based on Mosley. So this guy Mosley in 1913 he showed that atomic number is a better fundamental property than atomic mass. And please note atomic number itself was found by this guy because till 1896 nobody knew what electron is. The atomic mass was all formed by stoichiometric uh, equations by chemical reactions. 1896, this guy uh, Thompson, this guy Thompson found electron, and then uh, at that was the area where radioactivity was at peak. And this guy was a physicist, and he was able to uh, find a number of uh, electrons in a particular element by the rays it emits, right? By rays it emits. So with that, he was able to find the number of elements, number of electrons, and that is nothing but the atomic number. So he was he coined this word atomic number and he found the atomic number for all the elements. And then he observed that if you use atomic number instead of atomic mass in the periodic table as used by Mosley, it overcome a lot of limitations. Correct. And that's what he did. Also, electronic configuration is a perfect basis for classification of element. So this was also used because uh, there was a property that all the elements in a particular period, sorry, yeah, will have similar electronic configuration. So with that, we'll explain more when we learn, uh, when we go through the detail of this uh, table, but just understand the electronic configuration of a particular element is a better, the perfect basis for classification of the element. Periodic law can be stated as properties of element are periodic function of the atomic number. 
let me spend some more time on the electronic configuration. For example, I have element which has electronic configuration of 282. That means this guy is first, second, third, third period. Right? And this guy will tell you the group number. So this guy is second. That means it is a second group. So this is my element that I'm talking about. Let's suppose I have element two, three. So they are two for second. So it will be in second period. Two and three. So this guy is three. So three is group 30, right? So this is guy is this guy. So just by electronic configuration, you can actually tell the location of the element in the periodic table. We'll explain more on this, but just understand what this guy atomic number did with the Mosley periodic table. Right, it corrected everything. The first thing is the position of isotope is clear now. Why? Because isotope, you see that all these elements will have same atomic number. For example, C6, right? You have 12, 13, and 14. But if you see all these have similar atomic number, since they have similar atomic number, there will be only one place for carbon. Correct? And that's one. So since it is no longer based on atomic mass, there is no confusion of isotopes. The position of cobalt and nickel is clear now. You see, the cobalt and nickel is now properly arranged. Right? It, when you talk about the atomic number, they are properly arranged at 27 and 28. When you talk about the atomic mass, right, so they have some confusion because the atomic mass of cobalt is more than atomic mass of nickel. If you talk about atomic mass, when you talk about atomic number, Cobalt is less than nickel. So since I'm I'm since I'm using atomic number now, right? So this issue is all resolved. Position of hydrogen is well explained because, as I told, it is done by the electronic configuration. If you see, hydrogen is atomic number is one. Electronic configuration is also one. That means in the valence cell loud most valence cell it has only one electron so it is in group one because in this all the elements are present which has one electron in the outermost shell so with this they got a position for hydrogen because the formula for grouping is different now it is not based on the hydrates and oxide form but actually it forms similar hydrates and oxide but uh, it is based on this uh, electronic configuration and also answer this question that whether it is possible to have an element of atomic number 1.5 between hydrogen and helium we can say now no why because atomic number is natural number right so we can't have a natural number 1.5 correct so with that this question which was not answered that time it is solved now because atomic number is a natural number and a natural number can't be 1.5 that means if I say that how many elements can be between uh, 1 and 5, let's suppose, or 1 and 6, then I can say that there are 2, 3, 4, 5, there are 4 elements between 1 and 6. Right? If we talk about atomic numbers, but if you're talking about atomic mass, you tell that 1.2 and 5.8, the atomic mass of two different elements, how many elements can be there between these elements? You don't know because they are all uh, decimal numbers, right? So this question will also answer with this. Atomic number. So the only one correction that is using atomic number instead of atomic mass solved so many issues. So the modern periodic law says that the properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic number. Please note it is atomic number, not atomic mass, right? So the basis of this law is that when elements are arranged in um, increasing order of atomic number, having same valence electron, when this occurs at the regular, regular interval. So the outermost electron, the outermost shell, the number of electrons in the outermost shell is called valence electron. So there is a, it forms a periodic function. If you keep increasing the, if you keep arranging the elements in the atomic, increasing atomic numbers, so we'll see that uh, uh, this uh, elements with the same number of valence electrons occurs in terms. For example, hydrogen, if you see, has one, right? Then you have helium, that is two. Then you have uh, lithium. Again, it has one, right? So 
the way that's why it is then the beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen so if you see i'll show you the table it follows the periodicity so let's see this uh, modern periodic table so elements are based basis of the electronic company as i told and there are 18 uh, vertical columns known as groups 18 groups and seven horizontal uh, rows and they are known as periods if you see they are periods periods one two three four like this and then they have groups correct why it's called groups just for the uh, memory tip to un understand this they are called groups because this group is having same property this group same property so if you tell a group because they have something same right some chemical property the same so all these groups have same pro property and that's why they are called group if you take this bunch of elements they don't have same chemical property and that's why they're never called group right so group is same chemical property and that happens when you take the uh, you take the bunch in this fashion right and that's why they call groups correct and these are called periods and everything is based on the electronic configuration correct so uh, this guy group 13 elements will have uh, example this guy is 2 3 right this guy aluminium is 2 8 3 electronic configuration so if you see both have three electrons in the balance cell right and they have if you take this guy let's suppose beryllium and magnesium beryllium is 2 2 and magnesium is 2 8 2 correct so if you see both has 2 and that's why it is group thank you visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again